Balancer Bowl Futurity members, we have about seven minutes, six, seven minutes left for you to complete your voting. As a reminder, tonight we do have a social at the hotel. I want to remind you about that and also uh, be mindful there is a lot of activities going on tonight. There'll be the Gilvey on ice, a lot of good opportunities there. So I'd encourage you tonight to join us in celebrating the events of today. And shortly here, after everyone turns their ballots in, we will calculate the top five balancer bulls. So if all the balancer entries would stay back in the makeup area, then as soon as the Gelvy finish their second voting, we will bring back the top five we will announce the two runner-up and the champion bull, and then we will perform our draw uh, to see who is the winner. The juniors will help us with that, and we'll see who wins the champion bull today. About five minutes. about three minutes on the voting left. And I would mention this, membership, uh, Balancer Bull Futurity. This year we did have 100% of the members voting either in person or through proxy, so very proud of that. Okay, let's wrap up our voting. We'll allow our entries to start making their way out of the ring here.
if there's any more ballots for the balancer bull futurity, please bring those up at this time. We're getting ready to start tabulation. Thank you. In the Gelby Arena, we're going to move right back into the Breeders' Choice Gelby Bull Futurity. We're going to bring our top three bulls back in for another vote. Those entries are entries number two, eight, and ten. I'll announce these again as they walk into the arena. Entry number two. Coming from Sea Cross Cattle Company, Ashbarrow, North Carolina. Purebred 93% Gelby Bull, homozygous black, homozygous polled. Current weight 1160, scrotal 37.5 centimeters. Entry number two, CCRO, Sea Cross Manifesto J104. Next bull in the top three, entry number eight. Coming to you from Barwick Cattle Company, Orleans, Nebraska. B-A-R-G, all in, 05J. Purebred, 87.5%. Gelby bull, he's homozygous polled. Current weight, 1178 pounds, 37 centimeter scrotal. Again, entry number eight from Barwick Cattle Company, Orleans, Nebraska. Entry number 10, coming to you from Beestrom Ranch, Pierre, South Dakota. B-A-B-R, rye whiskey, 2302J. Homozygous polled, purebred, 93.5% Gelby Bull. Current weight, 977. Scrotal, 35.5 centimeters. These are your three top vote winning bulls from the initial vote. Members, if you'll come by and get another ballot, place. we'll have 15 minutes to place the bulls. We'll give 10 minutes on a, a standing, and then we'll walk the bulls and let you see them and make the final tallies. We have 15 minutes, so if you'll come back by and get another ballot to make the final voting, and then we'll come back after the finals of the People's Choice Balancer Futurity to name our champion bull. Thank you very much. Remember our Gelby night tonight at the Sheraton Hotel. Several events going on tonight starting at 6 o'clock p.m. We have the Breeders' Choice final events, the People's Choice. We'll also have a few minutes as well in some of their final events. The American Gelby Foundation will have an auction tonight. We're selling two Breeders' Choice memberships to become members of the Breeders' Choice Gelby Bull Fraternity. And then there will be the Gelby on Ice sale that follows up that this evening. There's food and drinks uh, available all evening long. We ask that everyone join us. Well, for those of you joining us ringside, welcome to the Jim Norick Arena here at the 2022 Cattlemen's Congress in Oklahoma City. We are excited to get started with the National Red Angus Open Bull Show. Your judge today will be Mr. Randy Mullenix of Toulon, Illinois. Randy was born and raised on a diversified cattle and farming operation in Woodbine, Maryland. 
He is the owner and operator of Purple Rain Cattle Company with his wife, Jamie. Purple Rain is a purebred Hereford operation in central Illinois, where they drive 100% of their income from the production and sale of seed stock. Randy is a graduate and member of the national champion judging team at Black Hawk East and Kansas State University. He has judged in 38 states, including national and junior national event, events for over a dozen breeds. Purple Rain has raised numerous national champions and has been recognized 42 times as premier breeder at National Hereford events. Randy Mullinex and Purple Rain are honored to be the breeder of the first ever Open Supreme Female at the inaugural Cattlemen's Congress. For those of you sitting ringside, please join me in welcoming our judge today, Mr. Randy Mullinex, to Lawn, Illinois. Just a single entry to go ahead and start over here in your Red Angus Bull Show. Certainly a bull calf deserving of a blue ribbon here. Love this guy's body shape. You know, really bold sprung, deep sided guy that's really uniform in his in his body depth. And even for this juncture of his development, you can tell he's just going to mature into one of those big bodied, soft centered, easy do doing bulls that's going to be able to go c go cover cows and, and still look really good. You know, in an ideal world, we might redesign him off that hind leg and off that rear pasture and just a touch, maybe make, loosen him up see him get out with a little more aggression, but a really good individual. Look forward to seeing him back out here. Well, congratulations and a nice way to start our Red Angus Bull Show. First place, we'll go to back number 40378, Par Goliath 20J, exhibited by Peacock Angus Ranch of Covington, Texas. We'll now bring in class two April Bull Calves.
Really a nice pair of bulls as we get into this set of April calves. Really a nice group all the way down through. I guess this individual that I'm going to go ahead and start with, he's just the most complete if you ask me. I like his weight. I like, his, I like where he's at for this juncture of development in terms of just his maturity. He's one that's so good right in the way it blends from that shoulder into his forerib. Reads really good down his top. Plenty thick-ended. You know, I like the way he moves out of his front end. I think he's plenty flexible at that hock. He might pick on his pastern a little bit as he goes. He'd like to loosen that up a touch, but it's getting better the longer he's out here. And I think it's going to continue to get better as he grows up. But just a good middle-of-the-road individual that's the most fault-free in the group. No question the bull coming out second is the most attractive through that front end. I like the way that neck ties into the top of his shoulder. He reaches out well out through that front end when he gets out and goes. Maybe compared to the one that wins the class, he's just not, he's a little more concave through that heart and forerib. We'd like to open him up a bit more behind that shoulder. Maybe see him travel with a little more authority off that hind leg. Drop his flank a touch compared to that class winner. But boy, that one's got a bright future. I can see him going on down the line and doing a lot of good things. The bull that comes out here in third without question, the high-performing, massive, thick-ended bull in the class. You know, I guess from a maturity pattern, he's getting a little out there for me for an April craft. But I guess more concerning to me is this guy's structure coming out of his front end. As you watch him come at you, he gets plenty pigeon toes, just wants to lower that head and struggle a little bit going. But boy, you can't deny that this guy is square hip, thick-ended, just chock full of muscle, big-bodied. Certainly a great breeding piece. You know, take him home and find some cows that move well out of their front end. And I think he has some usefulness. Next, the bull right behind him. Again, one of the two high-performing bulls. I guess the issue compared to the top three bulls to this bull, he's just not as square and true from hooks to pins, nor is he as long from hooks to pins. I love his muscle shape. I love his skeletal width. I think he's accept acceptable on the move. We just like to stretch out that old neck a bit and level him up from hooks to pins. The bull that comes out next, again, one you appreciate for that length of body. As attractive of, of a fronted bull as we see in the class, he lays in really neat through that shoulder. To me, he just gets a little flatter rib, a little more concave in terms of that heart and forerib shape. We just like to fill him out through the seat of his pants compared to a couple that go out in front of him. Same can be said about the bull behind him. Great length, great pattern. A bull that plants that hind leg and gives you a good look, just like the drop down that old flank, see him a bit bigger bodied, maybe give him a little more punch, a little more power as you view him from behind. The bull that comes out next, certainly appreciate him on the move. He's flexible at the ground. He's loose at that pastern. He's loose at his hock. I see a lot of longevity built in in this guy. Just gives up a little too much performance. Just like to see him a little shapier as you get in and view him from behind. The bull that rounds out the class, very similar to the one that goes out in front of him. Again, not quite as sound. We'd like to redesign this guy, see him move with a little more flexibility off his hind leg, but he is an attractive, long-bodied bull. Well, congratulations in class two of our Red Angus Bull Show. First place, April Bull Calf, goes to back number 40382, CRMS Jack and Box 124, exhibited by Stoppel Cattle Company. Second place, we'll go to back number 40385, exhibited by T Bar S Cattle Company, Billings, Montana, Missouri. Third place in that class, exhibited by Stetson Curtis of Archie, Missouri. Fourth place will go to back number 40381, exhibited by Madden Fisher of Hempstead, Texas. Fifth place in that class, exhibited by Chain Ranch of Canton, Oklahoma. Sixth place, exhibited by Zachary Griffith of Marietta, Oklahoma. Seventh place, exhibited by William Shankles, also of Marietta, Oklahoma. And eighth place in that class will go to Greystone Cattle Company of Stockport, Iowa. We're now going to bring in class three March bull calves. After this class, we'll select your champion reserve spring bull calf. Back over here in the Red Angus ring, just a single entry, but boy, this one could, you know, you hear it all the time, this one could stand a lot of competition, but this one could really stand a lot of competition. Love the combination this guy possesses of just length and agility and natural shape when you set in behind him. At times, he's a little lethargic moving out here, but I know what it is to bring a single entry bull calf in here. I'm sure he's going to get a little more 
<coughs> aggressive as he gets out and goes when he gets back out here in the ring. But boy, a good individual. Look forward to seeing him back out here. Well, congratulations in our March Bullcalf class. First place will go to back number 40393, T.C. Tucker, 65J, exhibited by Ty Scott and Kelly Byer of Ringle, Wisconsin. We're now going to bring in all of your first and seconds and select champion reserve spring bullcalf. Coming in out of class one, first place was exhibited by Peacock Angus Ranch, Covington, Texas. First place in class two, April Bull Calves, exhibited by Stobble Cattle Company. And first place in class three, exhibited by Ty Scott and Callie Byer. For those of you sitting ringside, please join me in putting your hands together for all of our bull exhibitors here in your first division.
All right, back over here in your first division on the Red Angus side. I think we have a foursome of really nice bulls out here. We had two single entry classes and one big competitive class. But I think when you put all these individuals out here together, they're kind of cut from the same cloth. They're cattle that have some doability and are acceptable on the move and have some natural shape and look. With that being said, I think there's one out here that sticks out pretty good. He's a real combination of look, balance, shape, and certainly acceptable down at the ground. He's a single entry that comes out of your last class. Congratulations. Good bull. Well, congratulations in your first division here in our open Red Angus Bull Show. Champion that division exhibited by Ty Scott and Callie Byer of Ringle, Wisconsin with T.C. Tucker, 65J. And reserve champion Spring Bull Calf is going to go to back number 40382. Exhibited by Stoppel Cattle Company with CRMS, Jack and Box, 124. We're now going to bring in Class 4 February Bull Calves.
Really a good pair up on this top end as we get into these fall bulls here in the red show. And I think bulls that are contrasting in type, but I just prefer the, the added structure out of the front end of the bull that goes ahead and wins the class. One that he's not as big bellied in soft center and just robust through that center body as the one is behind him, but he's so uniform in that body depth. You ask this guy to get out and go, he's more than acceptable. You read him down his top, he's very uniform. I like the way he ties from the shoulder back into his fore rib, and he gives you a really good look from the side. The bull that comes in second on the other side of the coin, he certainly is the deeper flank bull of the pair. I might prefer the way he flexes his hock as he goes, but at times this works to his disadvantage a little bit. You know, he wants to hock in a bit as he goes, become a little bit more restricted and jammed up in the way he comes out of that front end. But I love this guy's center body. Such a look, great shape. You know, they're kind of a wash of muscle. Both these bulls have plenty of dimension to them. Just like to change this guy's structure a bit off of both ends to go ahead and get around that class winner. The bull that comes in third gives you a great look too. He's more like my second place bull just in terms of being a deep sided type of bull that's real soggy and, and loose made. I like his hind leg as well as any in the class. His problem is I start studying him in, in terms of his shoulder. He's a little rougher at the point of his shoulder. Certainly not as opened up there right behind his shoulder and just doesn't possess the natural shape and dimension to the center and lower portions of his quarter as the two that, that go out in front of him. The bull that goes ahead and comes in, in fourth. You know, I wouldn't argue if you just wanted to slide him up one spot just for the simple fact that he does blend better from shoulder to fore rib. He's just a good kind of beef bull. You know, just doesn't jump out with any bells and whistles, but he's a complete kind of calf. Going to go out and make a nice herd bull. The bull that comes, out, comes here in third, maybe gets a little weaker in his top line. You'd like to strengthen him up behind that shoulder and maybe lay his tail head in a little neater to his spine. But you have to appreciate the depth of body and the flexibility this guy has. Just needs a little more punch, a little more power in the seat of his pants. Then the bull that run, goes ahead and finishes out the class, sure, appreciate him from a length and levelness standpoint. Just needs some more depth, some more rib, a little more power to go ahead and move up the chain. Well, congratulations in class four, February bull calves. First place will go to back number 40399, Rojas Moscow, 1496, exhibited by Las Rojas of Frederick, Oklahoma. Second place, exhibited by Kip Wallace, Emerald, Wisconsin. Third place in that class will go to back number 40410, Covisto Farms of Cromwell, Minnesota. Fourth place goes to Timber Creek Ranch, Marietta, Oklahoma. Fifth place in that class also to Timber Creek Ranch. And sixth place will go to Diamond Sea, Oklahoma, Big Cabin, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in class five January bull calves. After this class, we'll select your champion and reserve champion junior bull calf.
back over here in the junior junior calf division in the Red Angus show. Got a pair of really good bulls out here. Definitely bulls of contrasting type, certainly not cut from the same cloth. But I think when I put totals together, I prefer, I prefer the bull up front. You know, in an ideal world, we might power him up just a touch. You know, he's not the most expressive guy out there. But beyond that, he's just really good. I mean, this guy is so true and square from hooks to pins. Carries that top well when he goes. Developing a good set of testicles underneath. I really like him on the move, particularly the way this guy gets and goes out of his front end. Just a good individual. Look forward to seeing him back out here. Without question, the bull in two is the more expressive, powerful, higher performing bull of the pair. I appreciate that about him. He works with a lot of natural shape and dimension. You know, he's a little slicker haired bull, so he gets looking a little rawer in the way he's building that shoulder and on into his full rib. But certainly appreciate the power and the three dimensional look this guy possesses. Just like to see him reach out a little bit better as he goes out of that front end. Maybe open him up down through that heart girth a bit more and loosen that pastern from behind. But boy, this guy gives you a good shapely look. Like him from the side a great deal. The bull that comes out in third, just kind of middle of the road, you know, doesn't have the power and the dimension of the bull right in front of him. Not quite as smooth and sound as the bull that goes ahead and wins the class, but he's a really good, complete individual in his own right that just kind of logically falls into that third, third place hole. He's going to go out and be a very productive beef bull. The bull that comes out next, again, appreciate his length of body, his levelness of hip. When you set him behind him, he's ample in terms of shape and those pins set wide. Compared to some of the others that go out in front of him, we'd like to drop that old flank, just see him softer centered and a little more robust through that center section. The bull that rounds out the class, again, appreciate his performance and his length of body. Like to raise up those old pins, maybe clean him up to his chest floor, give him a little more power and dimension compared to the few of those that go out in front of him. Well, congratulations in Class 5, January Bull Calves. First place to go to back number 40419. JCL Frio 101J, exhibited by JCL Red Angus LLC of Welch, Oklahoma. Second place, exhibited by Las Rojas, Fre Frederick, Oklahoma. Third place to go to back number 40415, exhibited by Cal Schultz of Fairball, Minnesota. Fifth Fourth place in that class will go to S. Diamond Angus of Henderson, Nebraska. And fifth place to Bear Allen of Ardmore, Oklahoma. At this time, we're going to bring in your first and seconds. We'll be selecting your grand and reserve grand champion, Junior Bullcalf. Back over here in the 
junior calf division and your Red Angus side, I think we have a pair of class winners that are just really good. You know, kind of cut from the same claw, same type of frame score, cattle that are built very similar from the side, cattle that are square hip, just give you a nice, easy doing, middle of the road look. I guess the big comparison between these two, you know, the one up front has a little more muscle, a little three to more, little more three dimensional shape when you study them. The one behind is a little more flexible, a little more agile as you ask him to go, a little cleaner in terms of his joint work. I think both our bulls are excellent, but I'm a guy that builds them from the ground up. I'm going to go ahead, give up a little muscle. I'm going to stick with a second class winner to win your division, and I'm going to come back with the other class winner for reserve. Well, congratulations in your junior bull calf division. Your champion's going to go to back number 40419, JCL Frio 101 J, exhibited by JCL Red Angus LLC of Welch, Oklahoma. Reserve champion in that division will go to back number 40399, Rojas Moscow 1496, exhibited by Las Rojas Frederick, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in class six winter bull calves. Back over here with the Reds as we start this fall division. We have a December bull that's a single entry. And I really like him a great deal. I mean, this guy's soft-centered. He's uniform in his body depth. He's good-headed. I like the way that neck ties into the top of his shoulder. You get study him underneath. He's plenty flexible. He's plenty sound. Got a good set of testicles underneath him. Look forward to seeing him back out here. Well, congratulations in Class 6 Winter Bull Calves. First place will go to back number 40425, TWG, Helmsman, 210H, exhibited by Timber Creek Ranch of Marietta, Oklahoma. We're now going to look for Class 7 Senior Bull Calves. After this class, we'll be selecting your Grand and Reserve Fall Bull Calf.
Good pair of bulls back over here in your red show. Good rascal to win the class. You know, if you go ahead and call this guy just flexible enough and sound enough out of that front end, that's a pretty good individual. Bolt sprung, deep ribs, square hip, thick ended. Look forward to seeing him back out here. The bullet's in second here, a good individual in his own right. Uniform in his body, depth, soft, centered. A bullet's plenty sound and good in those feet and legs. You know, just ran into a bus saw of a good bull to go ahead and get around. But a bullet's going to go out and cover cows and going to do a good job. Well, congratulations in Class 7 Senior Bull Calves. First place to go to back number 40429. SFCC Houston 062H, exhibited by Carly Shutter of Frankton, Indiana. Second place in that class, we'll go to back number 40426, exhibited by Brindley Wilkerson of Canton, Texas. We're now going to bring in your first and seconds and select a champion in reserve, Fall Bullcalf. Just a trio of bulls out here in your fall division, but I think we got a lot of caliber, good cattle to look at. You know, this pair of bulls that go ahead and win the class, certainly not cut from the same cloth. You know, you got one that kind of kind of hangs his hat on just being complete and sound and just a loose made bull that's going to go out and last. And you got a real powerhouse right behind him that's square and stout and, you know, good in terms of his, his look from the side, you know, as an individual. Is he just sound enough out of that front end? I think he's acceptable. We'd like to see him move out with a little more reach and a little more aggression like this guy out in front of him. And I'd like to see a little bigger foot on him. But, you know, I can sit here and pick on everything all day. Beyond that, he's still acceptable on the move, and, and, his, and his feet aren't too bad. I will give the bull in front of him those advantages, as well as just the overall soundness advantage. But there's just too much power, too much good, too much look in, the bull, in this bull. He's going to be your champion. We're going to come back with this guy for reserve. Well, congratulations in our fall, fall bull calf division. Your champion will go to back number 40429, SFCC Houston 062H, exhibited by Carly Shunner of Frankton, Indiana. And reserve champion in that division will go to back number 40425, TWG Helmsman 210H, exhibited by Timber Creek Ranch of Marietta, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in class nine summer yearling bulls.
pair of Mabels over here in your summer division. I think a real logical place to start. You want to talk about a powerhouse that's just flat out chock full of muscle, expressive, big stifle, big forearm, and you need to add some muscle to your program, this is your guy. I mean, just read him down his top, wide pins, thick ended. You know, in an ideal world, he's a, he's a touch pigeon toe. We'd like to see him a little more perpendicular as he comes at you. Maybe he gets out of his stride just a touch when he goes away. I mean, but for one that's toting around that kind of product, Still acceptable on the move. Really good looking, good headed, attractive through that front end. The bullet comes in second. Boy, I like this guy, and I can see him working in some Cavanese scenarios. Good headed, flat shouldered, long bodied, level from hooks to pins. You know, a little greener. I, this guy looks like he might have been out and did a little bit of a little bit of work this year. You know, a little raw in his condition as he comes at us. But boy, that is a sound, functional, square, long bodied bull that has a lot of good in him. Well, congratulations in class nine, summer yearling bulls, first place. We'll go to back number 40433, exhibited by Kip Wallace of Emerald, Wisconsin, and Jaron Goki of State Center, Iowa. Second place in that class, exhibited by back number 40434, Greystone Cattle Company, Stockport, Iowa. Those will also be your champion reserve intermediate bulls. We'll now bring in class 10, April spring yearling bulls.
nice pair of April Bulls out here. It's just two of them, but very good individuals. Obviously, different types, but both good individuals. The big, massive bull's going to go ahead and win the class. And, you know, when he gets this guy stuck, he gives you an awful good look. Good-headed, like the way his neck ties into the top of his shoulder. Just uniform in that body depth. The bull that's square hip, widen his pins. You know, in an ideal world, we might change up his structure just a hair. See him reach out a little more on that front end. Gets a touch bow-legged, if you will, as he goes away from you. But, boy, that's a bull that's chock full of product. Gives you a great look from the side. That's all you need to see right there for this pair of bulls. Really attractive. The bull that comes in second here, the moderate bull, the pair, has a lot of usefulness. Bull, you set him behind him. He's expressive. He's shapely down his top. Just going to go out and make a nice, moderate, easy-doing bull. Going to be very productive in the next phase. Well, congratulations in Class 10 April Spring Yearling Bulls. First place to go to back number 40436. TLC Manhandy 017HET, exhibited by Hans Lind of Rushford, Minnesota, and L83 Ranch, West Hope, North Dakota. Now coming into the ring will be Class 11 March Spring Yearling Bulls.
really a nice pair of bulls out here, and I think there's some give and take in them. But when I put the totals together, I'm going to go ahead and use this bull, bigger bull up front. He set in behind this guy. Boy, what a circumference of bone. He possesses big top, thick-ended. Those pins sit out ultra wide. Just a bull that's uniform. In. He's not the deepest bull bodied bull in, bull in the world, but he's really uniform in that body depth. Extremely long from hooks to pins. And when you set him in motion, he's more than acceptable. The bull that comes in second here, I appreciate that added depth of rib. Part of it is by virtue of the fact that he's probably about a foot shorter body than the bull in front of him. But boy, we like that soft, easy doing look he possesses. Really masculine about that front end. Maybe lays in a touch neater at the point of his shoulder than does the bull that goes out in front of him. I really like his flexibility out of that front end. If I'm going to change this guy, like I said, we're going to lengthen him out just a touch. Maybe see him move with just a little more agility and athleticism in the way he handles that rear pastern. Good pair of bulls right up on top, though. The bull in third just kind of falls in there logically. Really a long-bodied, attractive fronted bull, smooth through his shoulder. Could certainly see him working in heifer scenarios, would appear to be a good calving ease type of bull. Long level from hooks to pins. Just runs out of gas, runs out of power in three-dimensional shape compared to those two that go out in front of him. Then the bull that goes ahead and rounds out the class, a slicker-haired bull. Certainly appreciate this bull's athleticism and agility as he gets around the ring. Just runs out of dimension, runs out of power and look compared to those that go out in front of him. Good force from my bulls. Look forward to seeing that top pair back out here. Well, congratulations in Class 11, March Spring Yearling Bulls. First place So go to back number 40442. JCL Polo exhibited by JCL Red Angus LLC, Welch, Oklahoma. Majestic Meadows, West Friendship, Maryland, and Conley Cattle of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Second place in that class exhibited by 40440, L83 Hollis 26H, exhibited by Berna Cattle Company, Stroud, Oklahoma, and Tolbert Cattle of Lone Grove, Oklahoma. Third place in that class exhibited by Green Hills Cattle of Mount Ola, North Carolina. And fourth place will go to back number 40437, Lazy L Cattle of Elgin, Texas. Now going to bring in class 12, February junior yearling bulls. And just a single entry February bull here, but a good type of individual, a little slicker haired guy, appreciate that about him. Good headed, lays in neat through that shoulder, bold sprung, uniform in terms of that body depth. You get behind him, he's got a nice set of testicles underneath. You know, not the biggest and highest performing in the bull, but just a good complete type of individual. We'll look forward to seeing him back out here. Well, congratulations. First place in class 12, February junior yearling bulls. Goes to back number 40444, Six Mile Red Wing 145H, exhibited by Peacock Angus Ranch and Six Mile Red Angus. Next class in will be class 13, January junior yearling bulls. After this class, we'll be selecting your grand and reserve grand junior bull.
again, just a single entry January bull, but this is a good kind of beef bull. You know, moderate, uniform in his body depth. You sit in behind this guy, he's got plenty of shape and he's expressive about it. Just naturally square and true from hooks to pins and you study him up front. He's good headed, he's flat shouldered, but certainly work in some calving yeast scenarios. You know, not the biggest, framiest bull in the world, but just a good kind. Well, congratulations. First place, January Junior Yearling Bull. We'll go to back number 4045, GMMB Swagger H6798, exhibited by Brody Matthews, Schaefer Cattle Company, and Lazy 11 Cattle Company. We're now going to bring in the first and seconds out of our last four classes to select a grand and reserve grand champion Junior Bull. We get out here to select your division here in the red show. Just a good foursome of bulls, all our class winners, and a nice pair of seconds as well, particularly the second of the second place bulls. You know, when you get in and study in these guys, you know, the classes weren't the biggest in the world, so we, we don't exactly have peas in a pot out here. But what we do have is sound bulls that are functional and stout and going to go out and do the job they were put on earth to do. They're beef bulls that are functional and going to go out and last. With that being said, I think there's one bull out here that really puts it all together. He's stout, he's good looking, he's sound at the ground. He's coming out of the second class, congratulations. The real decision in this division comes in for reserve. I'm gonna go take one more look at these front two bulls and get your reserve real quick, thank you. Well, congratulations in our junior bowl division. 
Your champion junior bowl came out of class 11. Back number 40442, JCL Polo exhibited and owned by JCL Red Angus, Majestic Meadows, and Connolly Cattle. Reserve champion is going to come out of class 10. Back number 40436, exhibited by Hans Lind and L83 Ranch. Once again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We will now bring in your final class of Red Angus Bulls. This will be class 16, two-year-old bulls.
Really a nice foursome of bulls out here. The bull that's going to go ahead and win the class is just the one with the product, the dimension, the shape. When you sit in behind him, big top, thick-ended, good bone underneath him, stands down on a good foot. Still, you get underneath him, he's clean about that sheath, flexible enough at the ground. You know, in an ideal world, I'd like to loosen up that rear pasture in just a touch. You know, but when you compare him to the two bulls right behind him in terms of his forearm and his stifle and, and the natural shape he carries around the ring, I think you need to find him in this class. Sure appreciate the bull in two. Boy, this is a, a big frame bull. I love the way his neck ties into the top of his shoulder. He's a good-headed dude that lays in neat through the point of his shoulder. Gives you a great look from the side. You know, compared to the one that goes out in front of him, kind of runs out of gas through the seat of his pants. You just like to stouten him up through that forearm as he comes at you. But one that gives you a good outline, good look from the side, good type of bull. The bull that comes in third here is no slouch. I like this one a great deal just in terms of his pattern, in terms of his balance. Just a good-headed dude that lays in neat through his shoulder. Could certainly see him working in some heifer scenarios in terms of his bone work being flat jointed. But one that's dead level from hooks to pins, you know, compared to the one that goes, ones that go out in front of him, gets a little shorter strided off that hind wheel, needs a little bit more shape down low. Then the bull that rounds out the class, you know, of the four bulls out here, he may well be the second heaviest muscled and maybe the biggest bone. But beyond that, we'd like to raise him up in his pins, you know, maybe lean him up a touch compared to some of those that go out in front of him. And certainly gets a little bit pigeon-toed as he comes at you. But a good foursome of bulls. Look, looking forward to seeing that top pair back out here. Well, congratulations in Class 16, two-year-old bulls and your champion senior bull. We go to back number 40447, MF Joker 962, exhibited by Avery McMurphy of Alva, Oklahoma. Second place, we go to back number 40450, exhibited by Nicholas Imhoff of Stroud, Oklahoma. Third place goes to back number 40449, exhibited by Cinco R Ranch LLC and Northline Angus. Fourth place in that class, exhibited by Mackenzie Moldenhauer of Valley Center, Kansas. We'll now be bringing in your champion and reserve champions out of each division to select a grand and reserve grand champion bowl. At this time, we're going to bring in all of our champion and reserves out of our National Red Angus Open Bull Show. Coming in out of your first division, your champion spring bull calf exhibited by Ty Scott Kelly Bayer of Ringle, Wisconsin with T.C. Tucker, 65J. Reserve champion in that division was exhibited by Stopple Cattle Company. Coming in out of your junior bull calf division, champion was exhibited by JCL Red Angus LLC of Welch, Oklahoma with JCL Frio 101J. Reserve champion in that division was exhibited by Las Rojas of Frederick, Oklahoma. Coming in out of your fall bull calf division, champion fall bull calf exhibited by Carly Shutter of Frankton, Indiana, with SF CC Houston 062H. Reserve in that division exhibited by Timber Creek Ranch, Marietta, Oklahoma. Coming in out of your intermediate bull division, your champion intermediate bull was exhibited by Kip Wallace Emerald, Wisconsin, and Jaron Gokey of State Center, Iowa. 
Reserve champion in that division exhibited by Greystone Cattle Company of Stockport, Iowa. Coming in out of your next division, the next division was the Junior Bull Division, champion Junior Bull, exhibited by JCL Red Angus, LLC, Welch, Oklahoma, Majestic Meadows, West Friendship, Maryland, and Connolly Cattle Company of Sulphur, Oklahoma, with JCL Polo. Reserve in that division, exhibited by Hansland and L83 Ranch. Coming in out of your final division, your champion Senior Bull, exhibited by Avery McMurphy, Alva, Oklahoma, with MF Joker 962. And reserve in that division, exhibited by Nicholas Imhoff of Stroud, Oklahoma. For those of you sitting ringside, please join me in a round of applause for not only our Red Angus Bull exhibitors, but your judge today, Mr. Randy Mullinex. All right, this is what we've been waiting for here. What a lineup of bulls out here. It's been a lot of fun for me to get out here and sort these cattle. You know, I raise British breed cattle and, and all these British breeds are near and dear to my heart. I understand the faction these Red Angus cattle play within the commercial cattle business. The ability to still offer true heterostis means a lot to me with these cheap purebred cattle. And this breed has come so far in the last 10 or 12 years, you know. I mess with them a little bit, you know, and, and I, I have a great appreciation for this breed. And, you know, some, some of my little pet peeves within this breed, I think, in my own head, that they've come since I started paying attention. These cattle have come so far, and they're, they're getting so good and doing so many things so well. You guys should be proud as breeders for the ability to these cattle, that they can work in a diverse range of environments and do things to keep you in, keep you in the cattle business. With that being said, I'll run down the line and kind of tell you what I'm thinking, and I'll pick you a couple champions. But... Uh, Starting with this first bull, boy, that's a unique creature. Uh, I've always, you know, struggled to look for these red Angus bulls that neck tied into the top of their shoulder, high and tidy, and boy, his can do that. I mean, he just gives you a striking look, gives you a cocky look. When you get in behind him, he's square, he's thick-ended, he's more than acceptable on the move. You know, not the, the softest center bull, bull in the world, but I think we go overboard in that sometimes. You know, this guy's got plenty of rib, he's uniform in his body depth, and boy, gives you a deadly look, as we said. The bull out of the second division, I love his softness, I love his soundness, I love his doability. Does he have the most power out here? No, he doesn't, but he, he's certainly within that realm of accept, acceptability in terms of muscle shape, and he does it on a very sound, attractive package. The young lady that comes out of the fall division, you know, at the stand, this one's pretty deadly. I mean, thick-ended, big top, square, nicely presented. I mean, a bull that's just chock full of meat and muscle. You know, you got some cows at home that are just loose structured and a little plain, need a little power, need a little more look, and they can carry him in terms of structure. He's probably a good option. You know, is he just sound enough out of that front end or good enough footed to go out here and get a piece of this? I don't know yet, but he sure gives you a new, unique, square, stout look. When you talk about stout, there's not a stouter one than the bull that stands right behind him. 
This fool is as expressive and powerful and thick-ended as anything in the class. You know, is he, just, is he just soft enough? Is he long enough? Is he quite sound enough? I don't know that either, but, boy, you want to talk about a bull that has some unique pieces and that you guys need to study in terms of cattle that can have some usage within that breed. He is certainly one of them. Just powerful, powerful bull. The bull that comes out of the big yearling division, super, super complete. I mean, this guy is dead level long from hooks to pins. He can get around the ring and flex. He's good in terms of his bone work. He's big boned, yet he's flat boned, and he's good in terms of his feet. Good length of body, like the way his neck ties into the top of his shoulder. Just a good, good type of bull. And then our bull that comes out of the oldest division, again, super complete. Bold, sprung, deep rib, thick top. You know, acceptable on the move. I'm not going to say he's the mover shaker of the whole bunch, but he's certainly within the realm of acceptability and does it with a world of product and a world of look. With that being said, I'm going to take one more look up here. I'm going to go ahead and start me up, up my engine and pick me a champion. Congratulations, your grand champion Red Angus Bull, exhibited by JCL Red Angus LLC, Majestic Meadows, and Connolly Cattle. Reserve champion in that division, coming from Hans Lind and L83 Ranch. the very first one yeah and congratulations your reserve grand champion bull coming out of your first division your champion spring bull calf tc tucker 65j exhibited by ty scott and kelly buyer of ringle wisconsin once again congratulations to all of our red angus bull exhibitors a special thank you to our judge mr randy mullinex